Hello, everybody. Oh, you can put your hand up, Daniel. How you dance? To the, how would you dance to this song? <laughs> there you go. This is the buzziest talk show in VR. Tonight's guest is the creative and talented Danielle Martin Peche. Let's hype it up with emojis. Welcome to the Hive, and here's your host, Nava. Ooh. Charging. All right, the Hive. I'm sure as you guys have seen, welcome to the Hive. Um, and you see when you entered into the social VR world, but for all the audience outside of the social VR world, this show, The Hive, was created by Vivian and it started in 2017. It was one of the first shows in Altspace to actually live stream outside of the, the VR world into YouTube and Facebook. And so it's just grown and now it's a social VR production um, company. And here we are today, all of us here hanging out with our amazing special guest. Huh? Uh, thank you Hi, for Daniel. inviting me. <laughs> I thank know, it's so me. great. It's, uh, it's so cool to, to be in this kind of, uh, how do you say, the first kind of wave of VR shows, I'm sure there's going to be more in the future. As I'm we, sure. Uh, I mean, so many more, right? And, um, what's the word now? How do you call it when you do like, you're the first ones to do something. A early early adopter. Early An adapter. early adopter, yeah. yeah. I think so. I think it, so it's exciting to be here and uh, yeah, kind of hang out with you guys. <laughs> I know there he is, the creator of the remedy, which is such a crazy topic. Uh, That's my you know, picture because over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's a story like about. This. I don't look like <laughs> I look like that guy. <laughs> avatar to person, person to avatar, and well, so what's really cool. <laughs> yes, and what's really cool is that he created this um, short fi film in VR, which you could see in Quill. Uh, it's called the remedy, which is a story about a mom trying to find a cure for her sick child and with everything going on right now in the world it's a, a very feel-good story towards the end and i know we're all going through some things but we never have to social distance ourselves in vr so we should be really thankful that we have a headset since a lot of people don't right now and um yeah i heard some people really uh, uh look forward to buy a headset right now <laughs> Uh, yeah, and they, they don't find it. It's really hard to to buy one. They're out of out of stock everywhere, and it's just it's the perfect time right now to own a headset. It's unbelievable. And the first time I met Daniel, we were in Facebook Spaces together. We were in a social other social VR platform, and um, he told me a little bit about his past. That he is a, a Disney animator, and we have some great stuff right now, like some really cool. I mean, look, the guy was so excited, he jumped on stage. We have a little animation reel of some of the work that he's done for Disney. Yeah, this is my animation reel uh, from Disney. I work at Disney Animation since 2009. So 2009, happy 10th anniversary. Yeah, 10th anniversary. <laughs> so check out my collection of some of my scenes. So what did you do here in that part? Uh, my my role is an animator, character animator. So basically, my responsibility in what you see over there is mostly the movements, the performance of the characters, make sure they talk properly, they move their lips uh, properly. Uh, in the case of the of the chicken, the chicken, all everything that has to do with movement and performance, that's my job. And then somebody wow. else does the, the lining, the, the, the texturing, the surface, the uh, special effects, all that stuff. So it's, these movies take a long time to make, and also hmm. they take a lot, a lot of people. Of different teeth, different uh, specialty uh, departments, right? So my department is called the character animation department. So we're just focused on 
um, making sure the characters are alive and they're moving sorry, and they, they perform for the, for the story, right? That's pretty so, incredible. I mean, the work you've done, Frozen, Big Hero 6, Moana, I mean, those were every single hit show, you know, and to have that yeah, movement. Yeah, I think that was... <laughs> I think I was lucky to jump in the studio when they were kind of just trying to get like a new wave of a really good successful movies. Is so the video kind of stopped or maybe it's just like, Oh there's tangles. Look at oh, tangles. Oh I see it though. For some reason. Wow. I mean, you guys, look at that. Look, 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 this yeah, breath of work it, right? is un... <laughs> like, when you're creating the movement and the animation for those characters to be able to be right on point with the voice, how is that different with VR, like what you're working on in Quill? It's not really different at all. Like you, you, you still have to have the voice uh, inputted in your scene first, and then you have on top of that voice to make sure it syncs. So it's in that way a very similar process. Wow. I think Quill is obviously in virtual reality, so it's um but the the, the whole dialogue the synchronization is exactly the same. I mean Daniel, what was it like when you were creating the animations for hits like Tangled and Frozen and Big Hero 6, what was it like moving, making sure that those characters had the correct animation and evoke that kind of emotion for it? What were some things that you did that helped you through it or even just, I can't imagine the excitement because if I, <laughs> if I got to do that, I would be the coolest person ever. <laughs> I think all the kids would love me. The animation on um, Tangled was really exciting to make because uh, the supervisor animator was a, a legendary animator called Glenn Keane. So I was really excited to be able to work with, with this guy that at least he was like, a, you know, an idol to me of animators. So um, yeah, he helped a lot to, to draw, you know, he was drawing on top of make sure the CG that we were doing was to the level that he expected, you know, he was very good at explaining what he wanted. So I think that movie kind of raised the bar in terms of cartoony, appealing animation in CGI, you know, which is, uh, you know, it's pretty difficult to do. Um, but yeah, thanks. I mean, this Tangle is one of my favorite movies. And the Me one too. That I've done. So. <laughs> Me too. My, well, it is actually my favorite because I, I love um, Rapunzel. Well, wh what made you want to get into animation anyway? I mean, just from your background, like how did you get into animation? Uh, oh, my right control battery. Oh, no. Okay, I may have to just jump in quickly. That's okay. Um, oh, you can Who see needs your right hand anyway, right? Yeah, you can see like, that was the... <laughs> you can anyway, just... Um, yeah, if it if it runs out, it won't crash the program, right? No, no, not at all. I should, I should be able just, to keep talking. So is that how it started out with the animation? Your right hand wasn't working yeah. right, so you said, okay, I'm going to start with my left. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to animate since, uh, since I was very little. I was in school and I was already already animating on the corners of the books. I was doing little flip books and stuff like that. So, so I, I've been wanting to be an animator since... Yeah, I was very young. So um, I I learned that there was a school for animation in London uh, when I was like at 20 years old, more or less. And wow. I, I decided to move to London to learn how to be a professional animator, and, um, and that's how my career started. So, I mean, I, it sounds very simple. Yeah, now here you are. Right? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't simple <laughs> to go to London, obviously. But, my my hand is not. It's so, but so okay. you're doing that on purpose. You're an animator. Let's not share the secrets with everybody. So <laughs> with the, with the remedy, let's talk about the remedy now because if anybody has an Oculus Quest, it's it's mind blowing just to be inside 
of the remedy. You can check it out in Quill Theater. It's free. And just to be a part of the story, how did you bring that about? Whoop, uh, sorry. I, I oh. clicked the wrong button. Oh, that's okay. I was just saying, what was it like creating the remedy? How did you come up with this comic book-like experience? Let me come back to the stage. <laughs> yeah, no, you know what we could do? We could actually show the reel. Okay, uh, we could, we could show a little reel. something on it because this, you guys, have got to try. Hey, yeah, Bob. let's play the trailer and that will explain itself more better. The remedy is the remedy. In VR, you can really use the brains in Merck's computer illustration. And in a traditional comic book, you're dancing on the whole page, so you're using your eyes to kind of move from time to time. I wanted to have that same experience, but each panel has different points of view that you can see by rotating your head and looking around like you would normally do in real life. And I also use the speech bubble to lead the audience to where to look at. For a second, well, I really wanted sure. to uh, make use of the stop feature. Let me change really have the that thread. feeling of you're reading a comic book. So there are moments where the action is going to stop, and then when the audience is comfortable with it, they can press the button and move on to the next scene. There's going to be moments on the story where I don't give stops. I want them to feel excited and thrilled Hello. about the action. I really love the process of creating this project that I'm really anticipating doing more storytelling experiences in VR with Quill because I really want to push the boundaries and see what's possible with this new medium. So I think Daniel might have stepped away for a second. So I, again, the remedy, it is on Oculus Theater and you can, or Quill Theater and you can see it on your Oculus Quest. What this experience is like, this virtual VR animation experience is like, is you get to really feel like you're part of the story. So you know how when you're in a comic book and you're reading, you know, the four squares or whatever, um, with this one, you, you interact a little bit with the story and the comics okay, part <laughs> jumps up. Oh, hey, I was just giving them sort of that experience of, of what you created. What made you create a comic book like experience? I mean, you could have just done an animation in a short film. Why did you make it the way you made it? Uh, the reason we decided to go, I decided to think about, okay, let's, let's make it a comic book. Because when, when you're in VR, you have uh, this kind of distraction that you're, every time you see like this environment, you want, you want to look around and you want to distract and, you know, you want to explore that background and, you know, you want to have your time to get accustomed to the, this new environment, right? So I feel yeah. like it could be interesting to do that um, in a comic book form so people can take their time with uh, each uh, each scene. Mike on. So and then there's a, Mike um, off. There's a, they they told me that they're in the new version of Quill. They were gonna add this function where you can add like a stop, you know, um, like a almost like a like a slideshow where where the viewer can press a button and move to the next slide or scene or whatever. So in they 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 added this feature in Quill, and I thought. The possibilities were, were awesome because you could you can make a really awesome comic book uh, interactive kind of experience using Quill with immersive drawings and wow uh, you know so that's why I decided to to do this uh, in comic book form so people can just take their time with each part of the story you know and read the, the bubbles the speech bubbles and. And I felt that could be an interesting uh, experiment, you know. Um, how did you come up? Yeah. How did you come up with that story? The story came out with um, uh, well, they 
He told me you can write whatever you want, you can do whatever story you want. So I always have kind of some ideas and things that I want to talk about uh, in comments or, you know, I have it on the back of my head. And one of the, one of the things that I want to talk about was the, the whole medicine situation with, you know, how, how sometimes it's how sometimes medicine can be really expensive for some people and some people have to struggle to pay for a cure to a sickness, right? I thought that was such a conflict in real life that it could be really interesting to add that into a fantasy story, right? Yes, so, and it's sort of happening now a little bit like that. People are Yeah, suffering. I didn't know. <laughs> I know. I didn't know we were gonna have a outbreak in a- I didn't care. either. <laughs> <laughs> when I wrote this story on the remedy, I didn't know this was gonna happen, but um it definitely is a, it's a good time to watch it now because it kind of gives you that like oh i relate to this now <laughs> absolutely uh, so i don't know well we don't know how expensive are going to be the vaccines for the coronavirus <laughs> i know right <laughs> but the whole and it's almost like the, that yeah <laughs> the whole idea of the of the story came out with okay the, um, this family is a full family they don't have the means but she's an awesome uh, warrior, and that's where I made yeah. a twist in, in, you know, in the story. I made this twist where she's not a regular mom; she's like this awesome uh, warrior that she, you know, she used to go on adventures in the past, maybe, but but because of the child, she had to kind of stop or whatever. Well, I let the people imagine in the backstory. <laughs> well, what's great about it is that she is that strong woman character and it is still it's national women's history month you know and it's it's so nice to see um you know animators creating those type of stories for women especially single moms who do so much and, and i can t i i can relate to that story you know it's just yeah she'll do anything and she'll win you know exactly. it's, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah totally it's, i thought it was an, an interesting character that, uh, like you said, is some single mom and she would do anything to get this remedy, this, this uh, uh, medicine for, the, for her uh, son. So I thought that would be a great starting point for an awesome adventure story. And then- Absolutely, and, then, and you use yeah. Quill, right? You use Quill for this. Yeah, the whole idea was to use Quill and- Can you explain Quill? to the audience what is quill oh yeah of course yeah uh, quill is a tool that we have uh, in virtual reality that you can buy it i think or i think it comes for free when you buy your oculus rift or uh, even rift the original yeah. or the new one uh, the rift s uh, basically it's a drawing and animation uh, program uh, in virtual reality so you can paint in VR and those paintings, you can animate them as well. And if you are very ambitious, you can create a whole, a whole short form with this tool. Uh, you can add the uh, music sounds to your story and have it synchronized with your animation. So it's a very powerful tool. How long um, did this animation take? The remedy, it took about well, it took a long time to do because I was doing other things at the same time. So I was right. taking time at Disney. And then at some point in the production, I, I had my baby. So <laughs> I had to take a yeah. paternity leave. Um, right. I had to work on the remedy at the same time as, you know, the first months. Right. But baby are very hard. <laughs> but, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, You're because sleepy. of the sleep deprivation and all that. <laughs> So what what if so, like if you took the hours would you say it would it took you about if you really sat down with it do you think it would have taken you three weeks a month no <laughs> much more I was yes, thinking that's that what I if I was if I was working full time on it I was thinking that it would have taken me like four months more or less so let's jump into the <laughs> next story that we have here um, as everybody around the world today we are all you know, in our homes or um, trying to stay home as much as we can. And this one sat with me so much because it's it's like couch potatoes, you know? I mean, you're moving around in your house, but there's only so much you can do until you're like, all right, 
let me Netflix and chill. And um, so let's check it out. Let's see the little Yeah, video. let's check it out, yeah. <clears throat> How long did the couch potatoes take you? So you also used quill with this too, right? Yeah, this one took me about three to four hours, more or less. Wow, um, that's it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you create everything in Quill? Yeah. Or did you use you other VR there? design tools? No, everything that you see there is created in Quill. Wow. It's, uh, this is a Valentine's Day uh, scene that um, Goro, Goro Fujita, he was like uh, challenge, challenging a bunch of artists to create a Valentine's Day uh, kind of. Uh, same with Quill and a bunch of people did that and he selected the ones that he, you know, uh, the ones that he liked the most and he uh, eventually they went into theater and on the quest. So this uh, scene is inspired by, it's just a caricature of myself and my wife. <laughs> well, I figured <laughs> that's what it would be. Your, for, <laughs> your first Valentine with a baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually, the baby is not in this scene. So I, I, when I drew, when I drew it, I was thinking this is pre pre baby, <laughs> uh, and this is like a Valentine's Day night where my wife would write a, a card uh, and we would have a nice dinner. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure you're having it candles. still. I, I didn't draw the candles, but anyway. Oh, <laughs> well, it's cool that you can create was, like, tools we like that. Watching movies and stuff. Huh? And I'm sure you're doing it now too, right? Yeah, yeah but it's a little more difficult now. <laughs> right, I'm sure. Yeah, you have to pause the movie very often because the baby wakes up. <laughs> right, but it's still a little bit like that. Actually, here's a, um, a picture of, of us hanging out when we were in Facebook Spaces and you were sharing the differences as an animator, how important it is to design 2D versus 3D, you have to have that mentality. And I thought that was really interesting. So I saw that picture and I had to throw it in here. <laughs> Remember the times of Facebook Spaces? <laughs> I know, it was a good um, time. I, I so appreciate you coming here, you know, and joining the show and being a part of uh, the Hive today. Yeah, I'm so glad to, was, to be able to hang out here. It was so fun, about, I mean, oh, yeah. to, to be able to create by yourself without anything else, you know, without just using your own tool, not having, you know, like the Disney animation and like 50,000 people helping, you can just create yeah. a film all by yourself. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's, it must feel really empowering and allow you to tell your story, which is, you've got so many great ones. Yeah, I think that's the most powerful thing about uh, VR tools like Quill. Um, there's there are other tools. Uh, but Quill is the one that kind of, in, in, you know, you can have everything in one tool. You don't have to jump from one application to another. Um, yeah, like you said, it's very empowering and it, it makes you really proud. I'm really proud of this project, Remedy. Like, it's, for me, in my whole career, I feel like this is the most proud that I am. Like, because I, I took care of the whole thing myself, like, the, from the very beginning story. To the color, the set design, character design, animation, um, uh, storytelling, layout. I mean, there's so many different uh, um, specialities or disciplines that you have to be when you do a project like that. But and it was uh, so innovative, too, because it was a new update for Quill. No one else had really played with it that way. And you, you were the first comic in, in Quill. Yeah. Um, and also tell your own story, kind of, you're in a story and you kind of, you kind of guide the story and you're a part of it. You're watching it when you're ready for the next scene after you've really, wow. Like, and, and again, you guys have all got to try it out. Um, 
it really just is so powerful who to be able to as a user. From, from, from this group, who has seen the remedy from this group? One, one, one person only? All right. Well, there's going to be a lot more after today. Yeah, um, if you have a quest, uh, yeah, you have no excuse. <laughs> you're going to be free. pretty wowed. It is free <laughs> and it's, you know, you have the time now, right? I mean, I know we're all homeschooling or, you know, working from home, you know, having our new normal, but it's such a nice little break to be able to experience someone else's story that really is just very powerful. And uh, thank and you again for joining. People, yeah, thank you for inviting. Uh, yeah, I hope more people get inspired by, by this and uh, hopefully jump into Quill and start creating their own comic books or or Yes, shopping. I know. So everybody get out there and create. <laughs> Awesome. Um, there, yeah. So. For, uh... Yes. Um, and then, if you're interested in ever having your own event, you know, you can reach out to the Hive, Vivian and Cami, Bulletproof and Liam. And next week we're going to have XR Pioneer. Um, it's, it's virtual education. Um, here we're showing you Pistol Whip. There's a tournament, and. Ooh, um, yeah, there's a really cool tournament going on. So check out pistol hashtag pistol whip tournament and follow it. And there's a big pool. And thank you again. Special thanks to everybody. And then uh, yeah, for sure, we'd love to see you next week. Oh, I almost forgot. It's Liam's birthday Saturday. So if you are on Twitter, make sure you. Give them a little shout out. Just follow the hive and you'll see what his handle is. So happy birthday, Liam. Thanks for everything you do. <laughs> All right. And then next week's show will be the same time, same place. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, anybody, anybody has had any questions? <laughs>